Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I want to talk a little bit about the Atlas Centaur and perhaps sort of more modernizing it. Well, this all got started by a comment uh, which asked me to try out the NK engines on the Atlas Centaur, which would probably mean uh, NK33s on the side and probably an NK9V in the center which would roughly match the thrust of the rocket. But the comment also said that they had already done all the math on it, so I went like, well, what does that leave me to do? Besides, it didn't seem like the most interesting thing to do with the Atlas rocket. Thinking about Atlas, I, I realized that there is a interesting thing about it. Uh, interesting thing about this tank. And the interesting thing about this tank is, if we took, take a look at the Falcon 9, second stage I want the okay block 4 is fine so we've got this block 4 tank right and that's the Falcon 9 upper stage well take a look at the dry mass uh, 2.9 tons let's call it and a wet mass of 108 tons whereas here we have 2.4 tons and a wet mass of 105.6 in other words what came to mind was the Atlas old Atlas fuel tank, this is the original Atlas Centaur, this is like after, you know, a few failures, this is the Atlas Centaur that came to be, and this tank is actually better. <laughs> so, um, this this tank is uh, sort of better than the Falcon 9 upper stage tank. Uh, so, but the, uh, the Falcon 9 upper stage tank has other things going with it, you know, like the nitrogen RCS and all that business. So, you know, we'll, we'll say they're equal more or less. And they're about the same volume except uh, with the super cooled uh, liquid li sorry liquid oxygen I think um, there's a little bit more density to this tank. Not sure how that works out but yeah roughly you could take this Atlas tank and replace the upper stage of Falcon 9 with it which I will do. <laughs> so that's that's one thing that we're going to take a look at but before we do that of course, we might as well take a look at replacing the original Atlas engines with the Merlin engines. So let's take a look at the Delta V here. Now keep in mind, Atlas has this weird configuration where it drops off um, the skirt with the booster engines. So we should probably just launch it and see how it all works out in practice. And then get a sense of things, because otherwise I don't think we'll get a proper sense of things. But um, 13,437 meters per second, it says here, one point, and let's just make sure, oh, the staging is wrong. So, after we put the fairings there, it says 14,370. So, let me jot this down, but we're going to launch it and see what it really leaves the Centaur with in orbit, and go with that. So, this is, again, a uh, Centaur A, B, C, D, D slash 1, and it's got the... RL10s that are RL10A3-3, so that is the old working version, and we've got a thrust weight ratio of 1.44. Okay, so here we go, and I'll just control it manually, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. So we'll have to drop the booster engines at 2 minutes and 10 seconds, I think it is because we've got, uh, well, well, we are an early Atlas Centaur, so this tank actually doesn't have that much fuel. For uh, SLV-3C, it's longer. It's like uh, eight seconds longer that you hold it for. Now one difference is, uh, right now, this engine is getting its uh, fuel from this kerosene tank at the bottom, the tank butt. Um, because of the size of the Merlin 1D vacuum, we're not going to be able to fit fuel in a tank butt, basically. That space will be taken up by the engine itself. Another quirk is that uh, with a Merlin 1D vacuum, we can't light it on the ground. It's not meant for that. It'd have flow separation and all that. So only the Merlin 
I want these on the sides. Only the booster engines will be lit on the ground. Okay. And booster engine set. Okay, that gives us a minute eight seconds left on this, which seems a little bit less than it ought to have, to be honest. Okay, separation and ignition of the RL-10s. Dual engine Centaur, of course. As they were for a very long time. Then fairing separation. So what we have here is a Tidra satellite. Which I think would be about the maximum capacity to GTO for for this. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be able to get a Tidra satellite all the way up. Maybe that would only be a later Atlas Centaur. Okay, yeah, I would... Well, I can do GTO, maybe. Certainly not circularizing with it, though. And the Tidra satellite doesn't have enough fuel to circularize on its own, so... Okay, so that is a tight orbit with enough fuel to transfer to geosynchronous... Well, to make a geosynchronous transfer orbit out of it. 2,474, or thereabouts. So there's now a Matlas Centaur. And you can see how huge the nozzle of the Merlin vacuum engine is. And I hope it doesn't collide with the skirt. We're going to have to see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's just literally too big for the skirt or not. But uh, we've got that. And then we've got the Merlin 1Ds. And again, only the Merlin 1D surface engines are going to light first. But the Atlas Centaur had a thrust weight ratio on the surface of 1.44. This has 1.37, so it's not too bad off. The fuel mixture in the tank actually leads it to be lighter. Um, so you can see that uh, it's only 103.7 tons. So it's actually lighter, and that helps with the thrust weight ratio and overall mass and everything. Uh, otherwise, the Centaur is still the same Centaur, and the payload is still the same payload. So, all of that is fine. Um, checking staging, uh, let's see. Uh, well, we will have to light the Merlin 1D vacuum before dumping the skirt, that's certain, and that fairing is fine. So for the Atlas Centaur, we had a reading of 14,370. This only has 110 meters per second more, which seems weird, right? Uh, and there's one re reason I'm gonna test this, because well, I thought it'd do better than that, but I mean, because the engines have legitimately way better uh, ISP. It is 348 vacuum ISP. Uh, I think for the center engine for the Atlas rocket, the LR105, that only has uh, one. Oh, sorry, 315, 315 versus 348. Let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on and ignition. And launch. And again, the fuel ratio has been set to match the fuel ratio of the Merlin, so we shouldn't have any excess of any kind. It's probably not optimal to wait until 2 minutes and 10 seconds for this. I'm not sure. After all, the center engine in this case has way more thrust. Honestly, we should probably not even have the center engine at all in this situation. If it explodes, I de I'm definitely taking it off. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna light the center engine now. Uh, well, we'll call it one and a half minutes. Or ignition. And... Booster engine set. <laughs> we don't need you anymore. It's like... Totally useless because now it has basically it's vacuum ISP here you can see it's max is 348 and it's got all this thrust well I'm sort of surprised the skirt separated cleanly that's nice oh I'm tilting too much here I don't have waps it's going down okay and that's the end of that second stage 
Okay, and if I take it out of physical time, or oh no, I went too far. I we would have got more than three thousand. Uh, we got into a higher orbit by a little bit. I think there was maybe three thousand fifty there. So six hundred better than the Atlas Centaur by default. So that's pretty good considering we're talking about the first stage doing that extra 600. The Centaur didn't really contribute. Uh, it was constant. All right, so now Falcon Atlas Centaur. Or sorry, Falcon Matlas Centaur. Now, of course, we don't need the booster engines anymore. We're just going to have the Merlin 1D vacuum using this tank all on its own. Although I kept the Alice Verniers, the LR-101s, they're still there. And, uh, well, in the fairing we have the Centaur itself as well as the, as well as the TDRS sat. And there's an old Centaur though, the newer Centaurs are heavier, there's only 15.8 tons, I think the newer ones are more than 20. But, um, we also don't have the full Falcon fairing, there's only 4.5 meters because Frankly, the full Falcon fairing would look even more ridiculous than this <laughs> than this does right now. And there's the Falcon 9 first stage. So there you have it. Um, the payload right now is pretty close to... Or no, it's... Uh, let's see. Oh, we don't need that shroud, do we? Okay. Uh, well, 18 tons. So we should have some to spare if we are doing it expendable mode, which we are. I mean, I don't think we can do recoverable mode with the whole deal here, but oh, we should put some extra mass on there. Uh, hey, uh, how about if we put a Cassini? Can it do that? Cassini plus Centaur? Still should be able to do it now. The payload is in total 21.387 tons. Well, this is like one of those Titan fairings it's getting to be. I mean, in height-wise. Okay, and as a final concession to sanity, I'm going to auto-strut this to the first stage. And... That's the separation. Of course, we can't use the standard Falcon interstage with this because the Atlas is thinner. No avoiding that fact. Okay. The Atlas stage reflecting the blue in the sky. The Falcon rocket even taller and thinner than normal. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it needed, right? But anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. Launch. It's nearly like one of those Thor electric toothbrush rockets. Now, of course, with a t lighter payload, Falcon 9 first stage could be recoverable in this case. There's no real difference in Delta V. Okay, we can probably thrall down. Could have thralled down during Max Q as well. Okay, separation and ignition. I kept the Atlas Verniers, by the way. <laughs> They're just so cute. Oh, throttle up. Fairing set. So there's Centaur and Cassini. As usual, the upper stage of Falcon 9 has a lot of work to do. You can see the 5,000 meters per second, but you take a look at our orbital velocity right there and it should be able to manage it with some despair, though we're gonna have to keep ourselves angled up a bit. Okay, last part of the burn. And we can probably throttle down now. They could probably manage to take a larger Centaur, one of the more recent ones, instead of this. Okay, shut down. 226 by 198 with 355 meters per second to spare. And then Centaur would do its thing. Centaur has 4,900 meters per second to do what it would do. And then Cassini has its own bit. 
but uh, okay well those thrusters aren't gonna do a whole lot but yeah now if you ask me why I did this I'm not entirely sure I guess because I can I mean it's about all I can say but there you have it it's just an interesting thing that the first stage of Atlas is about the same as the second stage of Falcon 9. That's basically the upshot of it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.